Hey guys, I wanted to create this video because I recently went through a series of surgical procedures on my nose and sinuses, and I want to sort of make this walkthrough in case you're about to have sinus surgery yourself, or someone you know is as well. I just had this done a couple of weeks ago myself and wanted to go over a bit of what you should expect, give sort of a timeline on the whole process day by day, share my best advice, and answer any questions you may have about the procedure as a whole. This will include everything before the surgery, the day of surgery, as well as post-operatively. I wanted to have this done because after taking a few CT scans, the doctors still couldn't tell what exactly was causing my head and facial pain. They were worried it was either a severe infection or it was possibly a tumor inside my maxillary sinus. Ultimately, it turned out to be neither, and in fact, they still aren't even sure what the heck they pulled out of my face, believe it or not. It was sent off to a lab, but actually, I, uh, I haven't heard back yet. Anyway, as a result, I ended up having a number of procedures done. Endoscopic sinus surgery to drain the sinus and open up that drainage hole further septoplasty to correct the slightly deviated septum, and turbinate reduction to reduce the size of both the first and the third turbinates inside my nose, with the middle one being left alone. If you've done a bit of research about turbinate reduction, this may be something you're worried about due to the potential complications such as entry no em or, excuse me, empty nose syndrome, which I'll talk, more a bit, or, excuse me, I'll talk more about this a little bit later, and the results of this procedure have done for my breathing. Um, let's start out and talk a bit about the day of surgery. You'll want to show up in a loose-fitting, comfortable clothing and no pullover shirts. I was scrambling to find a button-up the day of surgery that wasn't part of a business suit, and trust me, you won't want to pull over a tight shirt over your nose after surgery. So definitely make sure you have the proper clothing available. You also want to have all of your prescriptions picked up in advance if possible, so bring this up in your pre-op appointment. You may, you know, ask them to prescribe them then rather than the day of surgery, for example. That way you can already have them filled, picked up, and uh, with you in case you need them. I went in at 10 a.m. for an 11 a.m. surgery, which unfortunately didn't end up beginning until about noon due to an emergency with another patient. During this time, it will just be a lot of formalities, going over paperwork and verifying the basic information, you know, any other medical problems that your care team should be aware of, making sure you haven't eaten or drank anything, and so on. In my case, everybody was super nice, and I met with both the nurse, my surgeon, and the anesthesiologist before heading back. They want you to have someone there with you so they can go over post-operative care instructions with them as well, in my case, I was with my lovely girlfriend, who helped me at every step in the process. So thankful for you, Amara. Um, during my discussions with everyone, I was adamant in making sure how afraid of nausea I am, which seriously, to me, is much more terrifying than any pain I would have experienced. And if you're worried about nausea because of anesthesia or just in general, make sure to bring this up. Because I was so vocal about it, they gave me a nausea patch to put on my skin, about right here on my neck, while I was waiting for surgery that lasts for up to 72 hours, and they also gave me a cocktail of nausea medication in my IV, right before I went under. I pleased to say that it worked, actually, and I didn't throw up at all afterwards like I was worried that I might. After putting on my hospital gown, they had me spray some afrin up my nose a couple of times, and from there, it was just a matter of waiting. After a while, they were ready for me, and I said my goodbyes to my girlfriend and went on headed on back to the operating room. If you've had surgery before, you likely know how the process goes, but in case you haven't, I'll talk about it briefly here as well. They had me lay down on the table and put the electrodes on to check my vitals. Absolutely painless. Then, they prepared to put the IV onto my vein, which also did not hurt at all. Now, I'm not afraid of needles or shots or anything myself, but even if you are, this isn't something I'd really worry about. The most painful part of it is when the anesthesiologist would slap my wrist to make the vein pop up, and this was only a mild sting. The same as it would feel if you slapped yourself with the back of a brush or something. Before long, I was out. Now, they did not tell me when I was about to go under, or if they did, I certainly don't remember it, so that was probably the only thing about the surgery I did not appreciate at all, to be honest. The interesting thing about anesthesia is it's not like going to sleep, where you can feel time has passed when you wake up. When you go under, it's like you blink and it's over. There's no feeling of time passing. You're just out, and then you're awake again. My surgery went very quickly, and only took about an hour. I woke up a bit panicked, but not incoherent, at least that's what I remember. More than anything, I was mostly afraid that the nausea medication wouldn't have worked and that I would soon be throwing up. Again, this was my biggest fear with the whole procedure. So, my heart was racing a bit, and I was anxious, which may have actually caused a tiny bit of nausea. Also, at this point, I hadn't eaten or drinking anything for like 14 hours, so I'm sure that didn't help as well. Anyway, the care team started asking me questions and had me sit up. It all felt like a kind of rush, so they took me to the next room. I had a bit of a hard time thinking or saying anything for a few moments, but a couple minutes later, I was taken to another room, where I would remain until I left the surgery center. In that room, I was offered water and a popsicle, neither of which I really wanted. I'm sure this experience is different for everybody and will depend a lot on how your surgery went. From there, the care team talked with both my girlfriend and my mother, who is now there also, and went over instructions for the next few days. 
They kept me there long enough to make sure there was no issues, I was able to breathe correctly, and there wasn't anything that would require me to go back under. I'm sure this is quite rare, but all in all, I was in the post-operative room about 20 minutes, give or take. They had my mother pull the car up on the side of the building, and soon I was heading home. All the movement was unpleasant, but bearable. Believe it or not, the pain was not that bad after waking up. I expected it to be much, much worse than it was. Although again, this is probably something that's dependent on your type of surgery. Okay, so that was the surgery. Each day afterwards for the next few days is quite a bit different than the day before, so I'll go over each of them individually. At this point, I am now home after surgery. I'll call this day zero. I had gauze taped all over my nose, like right here, to catch any blood that would drip out, and my lip was super numb. So numb, in fact, that after coming out of my surgery, I poked at it repeatedly and asked, What's this? Over and over again. It felt like some plastic guard over my face. This caused quite a few laughs and was probably the only silly thing I said after coming out of surgery, for better or for worse. Actually, that was another thing I was worried about, saying something stupid. But as far as I know, that was it. The numbness and general feeling of anesthesia lasted the rest of the day and made it kind of difficult to eat. You can't exactly feel when the food enters your mouth, and you can't open your, mu mu your mouth very wide <laughs> because that stretches your nose, which hurts a bit. I was fortunate enough not to have to use a breathing tube in my surgery, so while I had a sore throat the first day, it didn't really last that long at all. So I was back to eating normal foods pretty quick, certainly not limited to soft foods like I thought I would be, and the surgeon said this was absolutely fine. Anyway, I bring this up because it brings me to another point, another important point, sticky food. You can't just open your mouth too wide, or you, you can't open your mouth too wide at all, actually. Um, and you also can't move your tongue very easily, like to the wide ends of your mouth over here. In my case, this caused sticky foods like macaroni or muffins to get like stuck in my gums, and it was difficult to get off, which was unpleasant. Uh, keep this in mind when determining what foods to stock up on prior to surgery, and this issue kind of lasted for about a couple days, I'd say. Um, day zero pain was not really that bad for me. I didn't even feel the need to take the pain pills that they'd prescribed, and instead just took Tylenol. Um, me personally, I don't really like taking pills anyway, so this was another pleasant surprise. For the rest of the day, I just kind of relaxed, did a few small work tasks on my computer when I felt um, that I'd be up to it, and just kind of took it easy. It really wasn't that unpleasant. What was unpleasant, however, was that night. You're supposed to sleep as vertically as possible. Uh, my surgeon recommended like at least five pillows. As someone with severe insomnia, this made sleep for me just about impossible. That night, I only got about one or two hours of sleep in total, and that is not an exaggeration. Again, that was not because of the pain or nausea or anything like that simply because I cannot get comfortable sleeping with like six pillows. Um, they also recommended sleeping in a lounge chair if you have one, but I, I didn't. I'm sure it would have been just as difficult anyway. Again, just you're not used to sleeping like that, so any sort of giant change like that is going to make it difficult to fall asleep. Um, so this brings us to day one after surgery, which unfortunately was worse to me than the day of surgery itself. This very well may have just been because of how little sleep I actually got, uh, the fatigue and constant feeling of being tired was by far the worst part of this whole experience. If you can handle feeling absolutely tired for, like, unbelievably tired for just a few days, um, you'll be able to get through this just fine. There was a bit more pain on day one, but nothing that could be managed with this prescription. I didn't even really notice it unless I was eating or accidentally touched my nose. I was too tired to really want to do much of anything, which kind of sucked. Um, so I just kind of laid there and did stuff in bed, movies, some video games when I felt up to it. Uh, a few small computer tasks, just waiting for time to pass, really. Make sure you follow all of your doctor's advice regarding starting medications on this day, because this is really important. Um, that night, I did manage to get much more sleep in, about four to six hours. Um, that's partly because I was bad and reduced the number of pillows I was actually using. Um, my surgeon did later state at a later appointment that it was better to make sure I was actually getting sleep than um, staying 100% vertical all the time. <laughs> so I guess I made the right choice. So now we're on to day two, and despite much more sleep, I was still dreadfully tired, which is unusual for me. Um, day two was actually by far the worst day. The packing that was in my nose had like fallen down into my nostrils, kind of like close to the edge, but not quite. And it was stuck there, kind of blocking any breathing I could have actually done through my nose. I was so unbelievably tired that my eyes were watering nonstop. Just about any moment of the day, you can be sure that there were tears running down my face. Um... I couldn't really do much because I couldn't see for very long without my vision getting all watery. Um, still no real pain. I took one time all that day and one pain pill before bed. By this point, the bleeding had mostly stopped. I no longer really had to use the gauze, which was nice. Um, they're just kind of uncomfortable, to be honest. That night, I managed to sleep about 10 hours, which was obviously a huge improvement. 
Um, day three is where I first started noticing, you know, even more improvement. Although, again, that could have just been down to the massively increased amount of sleep I got. So day three was Monday. Um, surgery was on Friday, so day three was Monday. And the day I went to get my pack and stints in my, in my nose removed. Because um, if, if you've done research about the surgery, you probably already know that they're going to stick, like, packing way up in here to uh, catch any blood that drip out. So day three is when I got that removed. Um, I'd read all about this experience online and heard stories all over the map. Some people said no problem at all. Uh, one person said it was the worst pain in their life. Um, which, you know, kind of scared me a bit. I did take a pain pill about an hour before my surgery, um, just in case. I probably didn't really need it. I really wasn't that much pain, but not knowing what was coming, I kind of chickened out and uh, took one anyway. So anyway, I go in and right away the surgeon looks up my nose and gets to work um, straight away. In my case, there were four main pieces he had to pull out, and the cessation was interesting, uh, to say the least. It was not really painful, but it was very uncomfortable, um, not something I'd want to go through again. Really, you'd be surprised how much of that stuff actually can fit up your nose, and you feel every little bit of it sliding out of you when it actually gets pulled out. I really can't think of a thing to describe it to because I haven't gone through anything similar before, um, nothing kind of relatable I can give as an example. Let me just say, you'll feel that sensation in places in your face that you didn't know can actually feel things. Like, it felt like it was just, like, like sliding through this tiny tube. It wasn't fun. Thankfully, it was over in a couple of minutes, though. So, um, I stayed a little bit longer than I should have just because there was, like, a lot of bleeding, and I wanted to make sure that slowed down a little bit. Um, and after that, the surgeon vacuumed out a blood clot that was stuck up there. The whole appointment took about uh, 20 minutes or so. And let me tell you, after this was over, though, I instantly felt better. Like, feeling 80 to 90% recovered right after that appointment, once all that stuff was out. It was a night and day difference. Like, I can't understate how, how much better I felt after that. I felt so good that I basically went straight to work afterwards. Now, I own my own company, so I do struggle a bit if I'm away from work for too long. If I was getting paid time off, I definitely would not have been so eager to return, let me tell you. Um. Anyway, I cannot state how much better I felt again. Like, at this point... I also kind of realized that the surgery actually did make a quite a bit of an improvement to my breathing. I'd always actually thought that my nose breathing was normal. It was not particularly obstructed, like I was able to get air in there. Um, so I just kind of assumed that's how it felt for everyone. Now, I was a mouth breather, but I'm not sure I will be any longer, because um, really I kind of had no idea what I was missing. Um, as I record this... Um, there's still a little bit of uh, dried blood in my nose. At least I feel like there is, so I'm sure it'll only get better as time goes on. Still, this thing alone was worth having the surgery, in my opinion. I was not expected to be able to breathe so much better since I didn't even know this was a problem that I was having, to be honest. Um, let's see, trying to go on. That night, I slept for about a good 10 hours, and um, every day after that got a little bit easier. Really, shortly after the packing was removed, I felt pretty much myself again. I did have another follow-up appointment about a week later because there was something dissolvable in my nose that the surgeon had to make sure I actually, you know, finished dissolving all the way and then handling any other uh, follow-up issues. Okay, so let's fast forward. I just finished my last post-op appointment. It turns out that I only needed that last one because everything healed so nicely, so two appointments after surgery. Um, I was expecting a lot more, so that was great. I made sure to follow all the instructions carefully, including doing my sinus rinses twice daily with, like, this, this squeeze bottle thing. Um, I think you can also use a nutty pop, but for me, he recommends some squeeze bottle. Anyway, I'm sure this helps uh, speed things up quite nicely as well. At this final appointment, my ENT asked a few questions about how I was feeling, um, if there were any lingering issues. In my case, there wasn't. Um, there's still, even now, a little bits of pain and pressure in my face, especially between my eyes, kind of, like, right here, kind of going down a little bit. Um, I guess this is, this is common, not really something to worry about. Um, at the appointment, he reiterated for me that it would be about a month post-surgery before everything was fully healed. He also stuck a camera up my nose to look at my sinus, and this was, like, the first time he'd done this, actually. This, um, I mean, he's looked up there before, but not actually, like, stuck a camera, like, all the way in there, except on the day of surgery, obviously. Anyway, he found out that not all of the dissolvable material had actually dissolved. Uh, so he removed a lot of what was left. This was not painful, but, um, well, he put a little bit of numbing spray up in my nostril beforehand to help with it. Again, not painful, but I would say it was a little bit uncomfortable, but not nearly as uncomfortable as having the packing removed, uh, you know, before that. Once you get through the packing removal, honestly, everything is easy. 
Um, and as mentioned earlier in this video, getting the pack removed wasn't even that bad in, in all honesty. Uh, the numbing spray did leave a really bitter taste in my mouth though, so if you know, you know that you're going to have this done, you may want to have like a small snack with you in your car to eat after your appointment, just to kind of help with that taste, because it's not something I would have liked to have lingering for a long time. That appointment lasted, again, about 20 minutes, and thankfully that was it. No more appointments, so I honestly I couldn't believe it. Again, I was really expecting one or two more over the coming months, but my ENT told me that it wouldn't be necessary, uh, which was fantastic news. Now, the last major event that I want to talk about happened just past the two-week mark after my surgery, and I must warn you, this is kind of a little bit gross, so bear with me. At this point, I was still experiencing some sinus and face pressure and pain off and on. Again, still kind of am a little bit less now. Anyway, one night I was up late and had this feeling like there was this bubble of like mucus way up in my sinus, like way kind of up here towards my eye that needed to pop. Um, that feeling ended up going away in like 20 minutes or so, but shortly after I had this feeling like I needed to spit out phlegm that was like stuck kind of deep in my throat and stomach, you know, kind of like when you're sick and you just like, you need to like cough to get it out of your whatnot. Anyway, if you remember from earlier, I'm very terrified of throwing up or even feeling nausea at all. Um... And, you know, at this point, I wasn't really nauseous, but I knew something weird was happening. I ended up spitting out, like, these giant, nasty, black blood clots, and they just kept coming, like, five or six times. Um, let me, it was kind of uncomfortable, but I, honestly, let me tell you, I did not sleep for hours after that. Um, even though this all kind of happened in, like, the span of a couple minutes, like, I was convinced, you know, maybe I didn't get all of it out. Um, if I wasn't able to spit all of it out. There was stump still in there, and I went to bed. I was going to wake up and be sick because, you know, like, blood isn't a good thing to have in your stomach at night. Um, anyway, I've been completely fine ever since. That didn't happen again, thankfully. Uh, I've been, continued to get better every day, and there really isn't much left to think about with this whole process. Um, don't really expect any more changes, just slow, gradual healing. If by chance something does change, I'll either write a comment with an update and pin it, or write about it in the description. Uh, overall, I'm really glad I had this surgery, not just because whatever is in my face um, was apparently never going to be solved with antibiotics, or finding out I don't have a tumor, although, you know, of course, those are great reasons to uh, have the surgery, um, but really just because it wasn't that bad of an experience for a lot of benefits to my breathing. Um, I no longer have constant pain in my head and face, um, just, the, you know, the occasional lingering pain that's assumingly going to go away. And although my breathing wasn't particularly bad before, it is a lot better now that I've had this procedure done. Um, you know, I can't speak for everyone, and I'm sure everybody's needs, issues, and recoveries are different. When it comes down to it, I'm just some guy on the internet, and your doctor will have a far better recommendation than I ever could. However, I hope that this is giving, like, a little glimpse into what the whole process kind of looks like, I and mean, what you might expect going forward. The fact that you're still here watching this shows that you're really thinking a lot about this. And I want to be here to answer any questions that you may have about this procedure. Again, not really from any sort of medical expertise ex perspective, but from the perspective of someone that just went through it. And also thought a lot of, about uh, well, uh, thought a lot about it beforehand. Um, finally, this is off topic, but if by chance you're a parent or know somebody that is, I wanted to take this quick opportunity to talk about my baby product company, Kinical. I'm actually in my office there now. Everybody's gone home. It's pretty late. Um, we sell this really nice, comfortable baby and toddler clothing with all sorts of, like, funny and cute designs on them. Um, so, if you just happen to be in the market for that, I'd really appreciate it if you'd check it out. Um, hey, somebody watching this has to fit that profile. Anyway, also, if you, by chance, you run a business, I share business, marketing, and success-related tips here on my channel as well. So, if that's you, and again, probably not very many, but if that's you, I'd appreciate subscribing as well. If that's not you, I can't say I'm going to post anything about sinus surgery again, besides, you know, those updates um, in the comments or whatever, if there's anything new. Um, so anyway, if that's not you, it's been uh, great sharing this with you, and I'm wishing you the best, um, you know, with anything you're about to have done. Again, any questions about anything you feel I can answer for you, don't be afraid to ask. Um, thanks for watching, and have a great day.